Objection! Ob ob objection! Hold it! Hold it! Objection! Hold it! Objection! Objection! Hold it! Hold it! Objection! Hold it! Objection! Objection! Hold it! Hold it! Objection! Hold it! Objection! Hold it! Hold it! 
Hello. Happy Friday. Oh, it's like we're back on stream on Friday. Why I need to fix this. Hello. Good evening. We're back for more Ace Attorney. Oh, big stretch. Hold up. Oh, okay. I just been jamming to the remixes, so let me get things started and figure out how to do this all over again. Set up stream. The hello, hello. I, I was a little late because I was watching a K-drama. <laughs> I'm now on episode 10 of said K-drama and I like it. I mean, okay, the, the place where I ended wasn't like a true cliffhanger, so it was kind of nice. Kind of nice. But I am determined to finish. It should pop up here in a second. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. I'm blocking it, though. Let me just move on over here. I feel like I should hold hold up. There we go. There we go. Okay. Hey, hey. What's up, Donut? You ready for the end? You ready for the end of this case? I am. I'm so excited to finish Justice for All. So that way I could go into the game that I actually want to play. Yeah! Yeah! That's right. Okay. Where were we? Oh, right. We finished the investigation last week. Right. Don't remember anything from it, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, and then now we're going straight into the trial, which this should be... The last part of the trial, right? The last part? So... I'm hoping, I'm aiming to, to finish it up tonight. That's, that's the plan. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. I forgot that I switched things around. There we go. Just jump to conclusions, you got this, yeah. Like the true Phoenix right way. Alrighty. Well, let's just get straight into it. Don't delay. I've already delayed further by eating and watching K-dramas. Wait, did I hit the wrong... Did I hit the wrong case? I think I hit the wrong case. Oh, let me out of here! Oh, no, we we're like at the beginning. What happened? <laughs> oh my god, no, this is a nightmare, please. I, I didn't mean to... Oh. Oh. Oh, no. I... Oh. No. No, let me out. I think I just... I hit the wrong case. I thought I had the right one. Or is this the right one? Wait, is he having a bad dream again? Maybe... Oh! I did hit the right one! So I wasn't like... Oh man... Oh man, I, I thought it... Never mind. <laughs> you don't look so well, dude. I wasn't. I was sick. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? I don't remember the voices I gave you. Ha 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 
If you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Uh, Agur. He was bro dude voice when he's in bro dude form. <laughs> you still remember. Hi, Wiz. Happy Friday. And then, yeah, evil edgy voice when he's a true form. Okay, okay. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Like, ever. Maya. Phoenix? Phoenix! Mia! Maya! How's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what... what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force the big, your biggest smiles. But... You can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it! Please! There's nothing left! Not here. Not anywhere. It's all falling apart. I have no faith in myself. I can't believe I'm defending a killer. The killer. It's not a cursed on guard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Oh, Gumshoe. I, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? You let me join the investigation team and we're chasing after the killer, pal. Then you have some sort of lead? Sorry. But right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not gonna give up. Gumshoe. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're gonna do everything we can to find a killer. If we can get Maya out, then you can get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? You had to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. You had to make the trial last longer? If you go at Mr. Edgeworth and everything you got, then you could draw it out! Oh, now I get it. Am I muted? Really? I, I, am I muted, guys? True? Like... Oh, unless Terry just has me muted. Cause I'm like, I see it on OBS, and it looks like... Only I can hear you! <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good. Oh, alright. Oh, glad. And yes, I do have hand movements. We're in the finale. We have to, like... We have to... To, to play it up, because... Yay, finale, you know? <laughs> you and Mr. Edward can do it! So, believe in us. We're going to give it all we got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Thanks, Gumshoe. I'm so t oh, I feel so stiff. Hey, Phoenix? You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. Friends. You can't buy your friends. It's the strongest weapon in the world and you have it in abundance. Yeah. E yeah. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through. I know it. Yeah, okay. I, I, <laughs> I got concerned for half a second. I'm like, oh shoot, did I just mute myself? If I ever do do that and you see me like, the lips flapping but nothing being coming out, please let me know. That will make you an awesome viewer. Or lurker. Either way. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while. Why does he always say this? It makes me sound like I wasn't prepared, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. 
She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ungar. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing the Nickel Samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm. No saying that she is guilty after all. I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is a calling card of a certain assassin. Uh, assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Corita was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt on guard. Ravel, 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 ravel. What a surprising turn of events! I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time. So I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least, until Maya is safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were going to make an appearance. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. Now, what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I, I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way, yeah. Um, Mr. Powers, please, you don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, but I'm just kind of nothing sort of a guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Yes. I, I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ongar's room. You know what? What Phoenix should do? What Phoenix should do is what he did in the live action drama where it's like we need to buy time. And he's just like, so when you. <laughs> he just like purposely draws out every single word. To the point everybody in the courtroom starts yelling at him, or somebody starts yelling at him, being like, You can't do that. That's cheating. And he's like, Okay, I'm sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> That's that's what he should do here. But I guess he can't do it twice. Oh man, if they do another live action, that'll be glorious. <clears throat> okay, sure. Visit to Matt's room. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai's costume. He was talking to someone. At first, I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I guess would be that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Power's testimony. And talking with the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. Ungard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy. What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just gonna have to... Charge in head first, right? I don't really want to fall for the trap. Like, I, I don't know. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Oh, wait. Let's press it. The defendant's room. Why did you go there? 
Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother sort of, and I wanted to say congrats. What's wrong? Why'd you stop? <laughs> Mr. Wright. What is it? You... You're gonna try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I... I know I'm just a poor, underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer. Um... No one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please. Don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. <laughs> Every time? Witness. I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate to continue your testimony. Sorry. So you went to the defendant's room and then... Hey, wait a minute. I wonder how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? <laughs> Matt was standing there in front of his room, so many cool scenery costume. Are you sure that was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai mask then. If that's the case, and he really can't be mistaken. And what was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? He was talking with someone? At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform, and he had a bottle of juice on his tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but... I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently on this one. I watched the two of them for a while, but then gave up and went back. Saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? And that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So, how long did you watch the two of them? Mm, not more than a minute or two, I think. Guess So who are these guests you were talking about? You guys, of course. You and Maya and Little Pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys and I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. It's like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. Remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state, I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from the story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Oh shoot, how am I supposed to find a... a thing? <laughs> what? I thought it was like, press every single... Uh, every single thing, and then it, it'll, it'll move on to the next part. Shocks, okay. Matt was standing in there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking to someone at first. I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, and then he. <laughs> Could have made them. I mean, all of this is correct, though. Uh oh. Wait. 
Is it Mr. John Doe? I don't even know how it'd be related. Okay, what is it that what's her face says? I was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume, which I can't really repeat that. He was talking with someone, at first I thought it was the bulk boy. <laughs> Only a few minutes ago you stated. You know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt only gave Bell Boy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip giving incident itself? Uh, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. I have to press twice. Hmm. Is it Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You read about the bellboy, right? That gave the bellboy a tip. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Well, you see, uh, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? That's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. I'm afraid I don't fall at all. It sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. Tell me about the tip first? The defendant is a huge star. He could afford to give a generous tip, wouldn't you agree? Well, uh, sure. But giving him that much, maybe it was just a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court about how much would you... But how much would you say the defendant gave to the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash? Ah, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. How'd they be called a tip, your honor? Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Wait and see and then potentially die. There's nothing I can really object to here. I mean, who could argue a fat roll of, uh, of money isn't really odd? Hmm. So supposing the roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, your honor. Payment. obvious for the murder of Mr. Juan Corita. Why'd you teach the music, Edward? Then, then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Oh my god, he's telling the truth though. Hold your horses now. Mr. Edward, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, your honor? I have here the card of Shelley the Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley the killer. He is a person the police's invest special investigation team has been chasing for ages. I'm certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelley the killer. <laughs> really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured out something. Oh? Actually, I saw that Bobo again later on that night. What? Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. This time, I was in the hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Burita's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kinda out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin. I'm sure of it. I mean... I mean what? You can't just edit off there. 
Thank you very much, that is all we need to know. For now. Huh? But I'm... I'm not done, there's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. De Killer. then we shall see. Hmm, so the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin? Then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha ha, ha ha. This is no laughing matter. Sorry, Mia. Second time. Wait, before we continue. I just want to save here because I can. This time I was in the hallway because I had to go to the restroom. And what time was it? Well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8 p.m., right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that, and then I, I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8.10 by that time? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Sorry. Uh, I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. That's what the bell boy saw earlier here on the right. <sighs> Are you sure it was the same bell boy? Yeah. How could you tell? Well, the bellboys were the same uniform after all. But you see, well, he had those stitches in his face. Uh, um, so, I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking to Matt. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? Of course, when I say room, I mean one from Rita's room. The victim's room, huh? Yeah. The one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears? It was Hon Korea's room, alright. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hm. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Now that I think about it, that bow boy did seem kind of, seem kind of out of place. Uh, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Because I have no idea what damage you think he's going to say next. was empty-handed. Empty-handed? The little boy was one of those room service people, right? Well, he wasn't pushing a cart, and he wasn't holding a tray either. You call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm. Well, I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers slide, or... Try to pull a fast one? Right, I think it's pretty unusual too. Ah, I thought you might think so. Hmm. There's no need to say anything when the defense gives up without a fight. Let's move on. Anyway, Mr. Powers, you thought the bill was a little suspicious, correct? Yeah, so he had to be the assassin. I'm sure of it. Please don't be so quick to judge. Uh, but it's kind of a Powers family thing. Think of every person as a thief. Well, I guess a thief and an assassin are both sneaky and silent. That's not the point, Phoenix. In any case, if that bellboy was the assassin, it would be very bad for us. But he really is the assassin, you know? Yes, but you can't give it yet. If you want to prolong this trial for as long as possible, you're going to have to pull some tr cheap tricks on this one. Is this where Phoenix starts learning? How to be a bad man. Where he he starts He starts going to the dark side of the law. Okay, now that I've read through everything. So what exactly was out of place? <laughs> Bellboy was empty-handed. What if he was just bringing in some towels? Try to pull a fast one. There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. If you two are done being schoolchildren, 
Bellboys are for room service. There's no reason for them to be empty-handed ever. What if they're dropping into towels? Changing things out into the bathroom, I guess. Then maybe... I don't know. You're gonna do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious. See, very well this court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. If you could amend... Okay, what you amend? That was kind of strange for a bellboy to come out of a guest room empty-handed. These lawyers suck. <laughs> Mr. Powers is doing most of the lawyering himself. <laughs> so you're saying that it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed. Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy, he was holding a tray in his hand. And there was a bottle of juice and a wine on glass and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. If you could come up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out and be handed, some sort of proof, then I think we could dodge a bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin. What kind of proof? <laughs> How do we prove that? It's kind of strange for him to come out empty-handed. What if he wants to give him a bear? A bear. There's no way. Nah. No. How, how, how would this even work? That he left the wine glass and tomato juice there? Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's like, why would he have the wine glass and tomato juice? And or the juice? Okay. Maybe. You're right. We could probably do this. Um, because in the Mordor, you see that? Right. Let's do it. Mr. Powers. Y yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But... But... Is it he really suspicious? He got all those stitches and... and... <gasps> You're judging him based off his appearance? So? A baseball has stitches? Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? <laughs> what? Phoenix? <gasps> well... There's also... I mean... What about him being at the end? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. Look at this. Right here. He's powering up. <laughs> this. This is the crime scene. And if you take a look right here, and also down here, but my finger will cut off, there is a wine glass. Alright, a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corita's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. Now, if you were to look on the- uh, what is on top of the table in the lower right-hand corner, right over there? Anyone can clearly see that has a tomato- uh, Wait, wait, there's a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. Good points. I'm saying this. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Karita's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was- he was empty-handed when he left. Oh, but that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Mm. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corita was already dead at that time? Ah, uh, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, I, I blame you for leading me down this route. This route? Route? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, 
Is there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed, or should I say, empty hand -ed. I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh, yeah! I almost forgot! Huh? But what That bellboy... He was wearing gloves! Gloves? Yeah, pitch black, leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. No, oh, boy does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. The bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather? <laughs> Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? <gasps> that man. He received a large roll of cash for the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that may that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ugh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. He's so excited. Their second meeting. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom. And then back to my feet. So you left twice that night and we didn't... I don't remember, honestly, when he left. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on that door just like that. Do something... Oh, wait. That's right. I need to start pressing again. But now that you saw while you were busy spying... Excuse me? I mean, a poor underpaid action star. I may be a poor underpaid action star. But even I would have stooped spying. Well, I think the point is, where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Well, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye and a sort of sneaky, spy-like... I knew he was spying! Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. He gave something to the person inside the room. What was it? What did he give? I said hold it. Uh, okay. That's better. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us more details. Oh. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. I should probably ask him only one question at a time. Ask about the person inside, ask about the something, don't ask anything. Ask about the person inside first. Who took this something off the bellboy? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? You're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. On Guard's room, correct? So it could only have been Mr. On Guard himself, I'd say. Then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so... After you gave the person inside the room the fig... Nah, 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 go back! What did you- what did you give? What was it? He gave something to this person. Yeah. But what was this something? 
if I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm, Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was that the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. Hmm, I think it was- no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. If I saw it again, I could see for sure. But I, I think it was some sort of wooden statue. A statue? Yeah. It kind of looked like one, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? Looks like for this child to see it, I'm gonna have to come up with something, whatever, the statue thing is, and show it to him. You're gonna have to trust your instincts on this one. Take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's continue with your testimony. What did the bell boy do after that? Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. Where did the bell boy go after he left his own guard's room? He opened the door to Viola Hall. Like there, and who knows up or not, right? Yes, I do. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at that time? Oh yeah, I saw that one thing. What? You saw something else? It was this jittery alien with a ray gun? He was watching Bond's door like some sort of stalker. Um, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Powers' testimony just now was just as vague as his first. A little troublesome, isn't it? But I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clear. Although, that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Ugh, talk about a lose-lose situation. Saves go my way through all of the- Was it this? What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh... <coughs> it was me, your honor. What is it, Phoenix? Uh, I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Uh, yes, your honor. Okay, Phoenix. Deep breath. Mr. Powers. The something you saw. Was it this item? Oh! Hey! That's it! That's the something! Wow, Mr. Wright! You really figured it out! Hmm. I recall we found this at Matt Ongard's mansion. At the defendant's house? What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelly the Killer assassinated Juan Burita in his room, and then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then, the bear being found at Mr. Ungod's mansion would be. It goes without saying, Your Honor, that Mr. Matt on guard is the killer's client. We're losing it. We're losing it. so far back. Ugh. Why am I leaning so much? Oh my god, wait, my butt hurts. Give me a sec.
Okay, I might sound a little farther away, but I'm standing up. I'm standing up because my bum hurts. Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it in course, I'm sure your friend Mr. Edgeworth would. Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it too. Hmm. I think it is clear that there is no need for us to continue this trial. I, I, I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we have overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. There's still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Uh oh. Oh, no. Oh, well, we can't have that. No, we cannot. I, I'm scared. What, what are you trying to say, Phoenix? All right, Mr. Wright. What questionable point would you like to further explore? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what else you can say about power testimony. We, we can't... The person who received the bear? The bear itself. The bear. What is the bear? I... Why was the bear important? I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear? Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. On Guard's mansion. However, Mr. On Guard was arrested at the hotel that night. Maybe you can try to suggest the bellboy planted the bug and did it, but didn't commit the murder. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh, I think your honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It is not possible that it was Mr. On Guard who took this bear to his mansion. Well, why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Whew, disaster averted. It You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at On Guard's mansion. You have this area completely surrounded, there is no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All the time, he was the killer? Ooh. The killer and on guard were working together, so to speak. The killer was hiding at on guard mansion as its butler. What a bold move! The bear figurine was brought back to on guard mansion by the killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, on guard had him to had him do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. And he gets the one that's all stitched up too. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Is there anything I could sack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to... I plan to expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. What? There's still another one. There is indeed, Your Honor, and it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? What am I trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Mr. Wright. Oh, okay, so it just loops. The person who received the bear? You know what, that's true too. We really don't know anything about the bear. Or the person- sorry, the person who received the bear. So that's a good point. I- I agree. Why is it stuck? Don't be stuck. There was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. 
It was inside the giant bear, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the bug was inside the giant bear. And that is to uh, the identity of the person who received the bear. You gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know it, who it was who put the bear. I can't be sure of... Ah! What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, at least give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so, I, I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but the arm... It was a Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. It looks like you dug your own grave yet again. How many times is that today? I I've lost count. So the person who took in this little who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt on guard is the Nickel Samurai. To the defense, we've made that all the clear. I think we've heard enough. We now know that this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was the, that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt on guard. I see no reason for this trial to continue, therefore I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. Oh, great. You're dead. <laughs> you see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. I'm gonna turn on a light real quick, hold on. There we go. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? You have to, Phoenix. You have to. Although, I'm just curious. I, I'm actually very curious. If... <laughs> I wonder if the same translation is in here. Hear the verdict. The defendant... Phoenix, are you giving up? If you do, Maya will die. And you'll carry that weight on your shoulders every day for the rest of your life. And sh Mia will haunt you for the rest of your life. Mia, raise an objection, Phoenix. I will now announce my ver- <laughs> They don't even let you, not yet. There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Dirty tricks? Phoenix? Your Honor. Right now, we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at On Guard Mansion. However, it's possible this is all work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Is this all you have? Now that Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the, kill uh, is the killer's real client and therefore the real murderer? Ooh, you're gonna hate me. Adrian Andrews? Yes. We already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare Nickel Samurai costume. Oh, then, then the Nickel Samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. On guard? 
she would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. Tonight. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Guard's mansion, it was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws of the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone could tell on guard did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far to pin this guilt on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty, it's a murder of all things. This is to say, Maya. This is to say, Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. And all disruptive parties will be or forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor, for the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with this what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it, 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 it strange and wondered. Why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer had did especially bring that bear to guard right away. Why do you ask? Was there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its, its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? That's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. She's coming back? I see. Well then, the court will take a short 10 minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. Eleven fifty-four a.m. Man, this is like in the morning. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought you'd be in. Uh, but I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Oh. I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! Girls? Where's Mia? I... I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. A really strong power? Oh! Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Oh, that's good, pal. But what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out what the killer and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time! If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking, keep, keep thinking to myself to keep the trial going as Omaya has been rescued. Can I just run out of, luck? out of luck this time? Is all our hope for not? A tent. Huh? A tent? I, I could see a circus tent. Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I can see a circus tent, outside the window, about 300 feet away. Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? Yeah, the very big circus, pal. Maya's somewhere within the 300 foot radius of the main tent. What? what Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on the map about 300 foot radius from the main tent, hurry! And... and? I can see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. I felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or that stuff? I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'm 
call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? The urgency. Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Gumshoe, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just had to make this trial last a little longer. I'm gonna take a drink of water. Okay. Rabble, 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 rabble. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will prove us with the real name of the culprit. The name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstructing ju of justice. Obstruction of justice? Right. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now you have ever- Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You have seen it before. That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the, sec the court up to this bear's secrets? I don't know why I keep jumping ahead when I read, but alright. What? Why does she... The bear figurine. Never. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity, with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. I can't tell that it's a small jewelry box by the way, but just by looking at it. That's a very complicated jewelry box. So this figurine is a container of sorts, is it? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really was something to that bear after all. But why would he leave it there? If it's something important, if something's important in there, why would he, he just leave it outside? Elaborate puzzle. Puzzle. That's right. Mm, but it looks like an ordinary figurine, true enough. To the people who don't know, I'm guessing, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? So you can take it apart, and how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right, and push it in. Oh yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, oh this is the most interesting. Oh boy, and his new toy. A boy and his new toy, it's like he's a five all over again. Are you are you okay? Are you having trouble there, Judge? Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So, what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this... this was a present from you! That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for one. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us. Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland, so I doubt there are many people with the same bear in this country. But this looks like it can be easily broken, especially if someone wanted to get what a get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy, but it can never be the same once it's what again once it's been broken. I really 
really can't tell that it's a small jewelry box. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Ongar didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm gonna get for now. Well, Mr. Wright, I think you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we haven't covered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there's only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this jewelry box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next, witness. Yes? You are the only one who can open this, please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? What is that? It looks like a, a note? I don't think we need to guess what at what this is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. That's the, the suicide note? The suicide note left by Juan Cardita's former manager, Celeste Impacts. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Corita himself. It seems Celeste and Paz had very beautiful handwriting. And she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed the crime. Or, sorry, committed murder and suicide! Oh my god. I can't even say what <laughs> Oh, good lord. Order! Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. The crime. It's suicide. Good heavens. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public, but I, I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Andrew's pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. She could have... when she... <laughs> can you imagine if she just opened the bear and she saw the note? Just give it a once, uh, like a glance over, and just starts ripping it up in the middle of the court. <laughs> she's already, she's already getting arrested for obstruction. Might as well go all the way. Oh good heavens! I was gonna burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop, Your Honor. If you could please read uh, the contents of the note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her notes, Celeste Impacts left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by Angard. About being engaged to Corita and Angard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided, in her despair, to end it all. And that's all Miss Impacts had to say. <laughs> There's one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. On Guard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. Well, it's technically already public now. After the post-ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word! Mountain Guard values, above all else, his refreshing like a spree breeze image. 
which is why he had to stop the soap from being made public. At any cost. It tells of Ingard's horrible misdeeds. It's Ingard's fault that the woman killed herself. And this time, he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible! What a selfish person! I guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who will defend these creeps, too. There's no room for doubt here. Mr. DeKiller's client's goal was to obtain the suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Oh, how am I supposed to escape this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Because we're kind of dying, you know? <laughs> Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know. I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay. There are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe, somehow, I can find a way out of the situation through one of those. The gavel's already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry! The suicide note. Or the figurine. Which one should I pursue? Oh. I mean, both of those are... Huh. I mean, okay. If only Adrian and Corita were able to figure out the thing, like the toy, they could've just broke it. How did they figure out that it was in there? Objection. Please wait, Your Honor. Oh god, everybody's talking over me. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it! It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Rabble, rabble, rabble. rabble. Okay. The assassin took this with him from the crime scene after murdering Miss Corita. At the request of his client, of course. So what's your point, Mr. Wright? I don't think it's possible that Mr. the Killer's client was not on guard. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. You can't tell by just looking at it that this bo this bear is really a jewelry box. The chances that Matt on guard thought that the note was inside this bear are zero to none. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. But I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. After all, there's no reason why Mr. Ungar would ever want a jewelry box like this. Order, order, order. You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this! What is that? It's a very small video camera, your honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means, as a means of spying. Spying? What the... I thought that the spy camera was in my possession. Matt on guard, and the victim both thought of the other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And... The victim, Juan Corita, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt on guard. Order, order! Mm. Mr. Wright! Yes, your honor. You. Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you're confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have a camera that was in the stuff bear's eye. 
But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Gumshoe's bug sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Now, on guard's fingerprints were on there. Oh, Phoenix, it looks like those hit cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I even supposed to say? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ungard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I, I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, what are you thinking? Mommy, is that man the big bad guy? Shh, stop. Don't look at him. The way he's sweaty is just so ugh, nasty. Ah, Phoenix. Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? No, actually. I... Uh, no. What am I going to do next? Is running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting the lid on this case. But in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There is one piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something... Okay, just tell me, Mia! Just tell me! I really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Which one? Which one? What? I mean, okay, there's that, but that doesn't help us any. Which one? What? Wh where? Hmm? It? Oh. <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, we don't even know if all of that is going. <laughs> Whatever. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this, this time we... I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia's talking about? Why is she talking about riddles? Why can't she just tell me the answer? <laughs> Present evidence. I have an objection, Your Honor. Hmm. That was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! Objection! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Which... It is his art, right? It is. Objection! Okay. The defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. This is not like you, at all. I like- okay. I, I can't- I like how he has to like, place his hand. To stabilize? Oh, that is an ugly- an ugly position for that hand. <laughs> In your eagerness to prove your point, you forgot- Oh, you're just taking uh, her- You're just taking Mia's quote out of her mouth, okay. Some freaky fingers, right? It's like spider fingers. Man. You. Oh yeah, it, it does not know how to point this finger straight forward. <laughs> You've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? Yeah, I'm taking it. You're dead. Let me say it. So you're telling me that I forgot something. You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Uh... <laughs> Which one? Oh, crap. It was just one hour, right? Shocks. Yikes. <laughs> okay. You're telling me I forgot something. Yeah, I... I... I it has to be one of these things. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> oh! I'm dying! But I kind of want to do it on purpose, because I want to know if there is the scene. forgot. I don't think it's this, though. I'm not sure. figurine one more time. You are so close, Edward. No way. It can't be this, can it? Okay. I didn't think so. I'm like not thinking. I don't know what this- what- what she could be referring to. She throws me in for a loop and I'm like, I have no idea. I'm not on the same wavelength, Mia. I'm on Phoenix's way, like... about to just click through all of these at this point. Mm. <laughs> ah, I don't know. Let me see. Let me think again. Because I am... stumped, actually. You say it so confidently, Phoenix, and now I'm not, like, on anybody's wavelength. <laughs> okay, so it isn't any of these.
that overlooked. It's really important. Like, maybe? Potentially? He just got so excited about pulling out the suicide note that he actually didn't read the suicide note? Maybe? That is Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Uh, who knows? I mean, sure, the suicide note was found inside this bear. I need water. Give me a sec. But this bear was in my position, pos position, possession until only a few minutes ago. Moments ago. Oh god. Which means the handwriting on the suicide note has yet to be analyzed. Oh. So, as to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by a misimpact or not, it has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting. Mr. Wright, you... Are you saying this suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin the murder on Mr. On Guard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into a despair? How dare you! Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Oh god, that's like her eighth pair of glasses. Miss Andrews, you need new glasses. You're like, ones that don't break. Like, that quickly. You wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Miss Matt on guard. I... I did no such thing. Right? If you're going to pronounce the suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your thing. <laughs> okay. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. Is this what's gonna be that we're actually correct here? <laughs> Imagine. I mean, so the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. Oh, that's right, heard him. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? It is as the defense has stated. The handwriting has yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impossible. That's impossible. God, everybody's pissed. This isn't good, Phoenix. Jess is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't have didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Handwriting analysis, my butt. That's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. On guard is guilty. Look any idiot can say that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty! 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 Oh, okay. These people are... are... are pissed. What, what is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello? Gumshoe? Oh. What is with him? What's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh... He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to wake it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? 
he found his hideout, pal. But the two of them are already gone. This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But don't tell me we don't. We don't have any more. Yeah, we are out of time. Do you hear that? I'm calling for his head. Mr. Bright, I can't for us to come this far in. Oh! What is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I can't do that. So right, would you please get a hold of yourself? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth! Please! You gotta buy us some more time! Court is in session. Oh. I'm sorry, Your Honor, you were saying? Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this, however. It appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. I... This time I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Please wait, Your Honor. Edgeworth? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. Can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourned it today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. I'm confused. Why is delaying the trial until tomorrow a bad thing at this point? I, I think it's because they're, they're, the tension is that Maya is still kidnapped and the killer is actively starving her to death. And it's already been two days? Two? Two days, I think, of her... No, actually, two or three days. Two or three days of her going without food, and they are concerned about her well-being. So, until we get the not guilty verdict, or prolong it till they are able to save her, she is as good as dead to Phoenix, and that concerns him greatly. Her life is on the line. <laughs> At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. Please be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. Two oh four. Yay! This is a long proceeding. Right? Well, what's going on with my situation? The killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes? We can't find her in that time. Ugh. Report. Uh, is that Mr. Edward? We don't have time. Just spit it out. Right. It looks like we just missed them, sir. But the killer left a few things behind by accident and is rushing it away. A few things? Could we use any of them as evidence? <laughs> I thought you'd ask, pal. I got the things he left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. You don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. If those guys weren't looking, I swept and ran. <gasps> I swept the stuff and ran! Oh, okay, what? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get too much trouble over this. My hunk of junk of car. I'd say I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. All right, just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one! He just starts high-tailing it down the highway. Pulling out all the stops and running every red light. Oh no, gum shoot. <laughs> He's actually breaking all the crimes now. Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. Hmm? 
Hey, what's wrong? Sis of Gumshoe, answer me! No one can stop me. Did he die? What, what happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We gotta hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before- If we don't get those- Get to those items before they do, the police will take the- Will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well, if there's a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Why? Oh, why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there a way to find- There is a way. There is a way. That's right, there is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find Detective Gumshoe. I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Why are you bringing up Francisca at a time like this? Oh, I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca. Will she even want to help us? Edgeworth, what is it? Uh, I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty. But what I'm doing now? I'm pitting the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say... Defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right? It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, I can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is prosecutor, is prosecutor Ed Edgeworth really here? Yes, Bailiff? There's a phone call for you. Oh, it's a Bailiff. I thought it was Phoenix. <laughs> There's a phone call for you, sir. He said it was extremely urgent. I'll be finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it about what it is you must do. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. What a trial. Yes. Let me save. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick break too. I'm gonna feed Butterball real quick. Um, I will pull up a three minute ad in the meantime, so you guys can also just like walk away, stretch, get some water, cause I'm gonna be doing the same. And we'll continue. Give Butterball some love for me, please. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely will. All right, I'll be right back.
Sorry guys, just a little longer. Butterball still wants to eat, so still have to help him eat. But give me maybe like another three more minutes, okay? Okay, I am back. For really. For realsies. Butterball ate a good chunk, so I'm pretty happy. I'll likely be feeding him again in two hours, but hopefully we'll be done by then, so we'll see. Alright, let's continue. Hold on, before we do, let me uh adjust a few things real quick. Yeah, okay, that, sh that should be good. All right. Oh, I think I already clicked on that, but whatever. It's okay, keep it fresh, keep it fresh. Oops, hold up. Going to move this over here too. Nice, 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 nice. 30 minutes. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Y yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> when both sides are actually panicking. <laughs> I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edworth? I... That is... It's nothing, Your Honor wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. I might sneeze. Hold on. Okay. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on this impact suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, unfortunately, 
we have discovered that the suicide note is a forgery. What? I, I was just kidding. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This... This note was not written by Miss Impacts herself. It is a fake. Oh my god. Y'all. Dude, did you hear that car outside? Why, why are y'all so loud out there? Oh, sheesh. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impacts, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however... It appears the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corita. Corita? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impacts never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about On Guard. However, Your Honor, even though this suicide note is indeed fake, Mr. On Guard could not have known that, and so that fact, and so that facts remain unchanged. That was kind of weird. Oh, uh, no, I guess it's correct. Correct. Just reads weird, you know? Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. This theory that a guard had no idea that the suicide note was fake? Something seems a little wrong with it, or back down? I... <sighs> I think I would back down. Why, why pursue it? He had no idea. Something seems a little wrong with it. For him to not know it was fake? Nah, no, back down. It's no use. Something feels wrong, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Hmm, actually, there's something I would like to ask. Mr. Edgeworth, you had stated something earlier to the effect that the defendant had spied on Mr. Carita's private life. I believe that this would mean that he would have known about that note as well. That's it. Yes, and so naturally. This means Mr. Hungard would have known that the note was a fake. Ugh. Oh. Well, hey, look at that. The judge is actually doing work. Order, order, see here, Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I was the one who thought of the spy thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all using our brains here. Jumping in and stealing my thunder like that is simply... I can't even describe it. Uh, yes, sorry. I could even... I could have even bragged about embarrassing Mr. Edwards and my grandchild, had you not. For that, I assign you... <gasps> uh, uh, for relying on him? <laughs> Fine. All right, judge. You can have that. Oh, you can have that. Whatever. So then the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation had suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ungard's motive for murder was has suddenly disappeared into thin air. Your Honor. It's not as if Mr. On Guard monitored Mr. Corita 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. On Guard didn't even know of. I'm right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery in an unknown place? Ugh. Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like, this time, it is you who has dug his own grave. Uh. As I figured, huh? As you figured, as I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The next question was, what's next? What's next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ongard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, uh, I mean, this this witness is a little unusual. Edward stuttering? This is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? The witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the questions of who was it that hired Jelly the Killer to commit murder? Is it possible? Who in the 
no such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is. It's. Um. Yes, go on, who is it? The man himself, Mr. Shelley DeKiller. Oh, Mr. DeKiller. Wait, Shelley DeKiller? Uh, you mean the killer? Uh, I mean, the assassin. Yes, your honor. He's coming here to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a matter of speaking. I recognize this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright? Yes? Is this alright with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense, defense has no objections, your honor. I wonder if it is really all right to do this. Very well then, the prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Hedgeworth, is there really no other way left to us? Now then, witness. Um, your name and your, uh, occupation, please. Very good, sir. My name is Shelley De Killer, and I am a professional assassin. Uh, I say, what is going on here? Your Honor, how can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. The Killer will testify to this court. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got about was earlier was about. Oh, no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. You allowed a parrot in your court? Whatever. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. The Killer himself. Witness. Please present some sort of proof that you are in fact Shelly the Killer. I understand. Please wait a second. I'm so hungry. Maya! Maya! A voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Can you imagine being like somebody watching? You you decided to go to the local court and be like, you know what? I'll just I'll just listen it. I'll, I'll I'll just watch. And then this entire time you're sitting there thinking to yourself, what is this case? It's just going everywhere. You find yourself glued to the seats of this court, paying attention, watching this play-by-play, -play, like it's like it's a football match or a basketball match. <laughs> oh, sheesh. Hi, Ray. What's up? Good evening. Happy Friday. It looks like we have run into another unexpected turn of events. Well, it does seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so it doesn't seem like. Sorry. Now then, witness, there is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of the client, you killed Mr. Juan Corita, is that correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corita. Designing and I feel pretty good. Nice. How is everyone? I'm okay. I'm determined. I'm determined to finish this. For sure. Ugh. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. It's a bad dream. Shelly to kill her, what is he going to say? It's cool how the radio still manages to look like the person. It's such a good design. There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm, Mr. De Killer seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. Well, he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor. Mr. Day Killer is only stating the truth. 
He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by the by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. There's something I'm for say. Can you imagine pressing this one? You know what? Just press it. Screw it. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is the this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? Sorry, go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. It's only because you don't know my, about my situation. To an assassin, there is nothing more important. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people know my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the dead killer name so my clients can trust me. We couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, and if it ever did, Yes, that person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly. Uh, that's enough. Please, no more. Very well. It was only a hypothetical anyway. <laughs> that seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think this is a very, this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role. This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You. Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now. Excuse me, but would you care to die? Oh, no, 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 I, I, no, I, 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 I didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. <laughs> Would you like to die, judge? It is my wish that you grasp this, okay? We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Oh, uh, that ego maniac. Blech. How do you say that ego... Ego maniacal? Ego ego maniacal maniacal <laughs> English, I don't know. It's not so good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you won't let everything bother you. Somehow the that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all the extra fluff, just tell us the name already. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. Yeah, understand a psychopath. You gotta think like a psychopath. So understand. He seems very steadfast and close, so you're gonna have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. There's nothing important than the trust between a client and himself. That is the reason I am here today on this weekend stand. I wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of the client. So... I have to prove... What? The... There was no trust? I guess? I am jumping the gun with this. Uh, okay, that wasn't it. I thought I pressed everything. Nothing important. I'll try this again. Trust between you and your client in a fashion manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. Oh, I'm sorry, but I was just wondering about something you just said. Hold up. I... 
I, I need to save everything because there is a point in here that I'm like, it's a point of no return. <laughs> trust between you and your client. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, but I was just wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then. Everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think, really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. The reason I am here on the stand today. Now then, I do believe it's about time I revealed the date. Hey, he changed his thing without us. What is it? Uh, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness, what is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corita? That person's name is. <laughs> Or Phoenix <laughs> just immediately cuts to him just being uh, totally distraught. Adrian Andrews. What? <laughs> Witness! That's not who you told me it was earlier. Frank, how? What are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I should know my client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? Oh, poor Edward, he's getting played. <laughs> this can't be. On the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. De Killer just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edward in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court. Mr. The Killer told him a different name. Not on guard, perhaps. I knew it. This... This is outrageous! I was deceived! This witness is telling a very serious lie. But you were the one who summoned this witness! Oh. Uh, you... Shelly the Killer! My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is not on guard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his pro acquittal. Pro proquittal. Acquittal. <laughs> hmm. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah, even though we know it's not the truth. What what story are we making that is a truth? The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. De Killer's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt on guard is innocent. I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Bela, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews immediately. What now? For the way this is going, guard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... What if this is right? The killer is lying. If on guard, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? No. <laughs> Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelly the killer is certainly lying under oath. Mm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now, it was almost just a big one lie. One big lie. Miss Andrews. 
This whole sign note may have been a fake. But that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste is dead. And Mom's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. The testimony just now. He had to believe me. It was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. the Killer himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife, the button, and donning the Nickel Samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. You know that Miss Celeste impacts with a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reason to want them both dead. I... no. It's right. You... you know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them. Please. Help me. Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict to save Maya? Or do I throw away this chance away? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? Okay. The reason why I saved is because there's a certain ending that I want to see. And, uh, I'm curious if it still has the same localization. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense requests that. It's no use. I can't. It feels like I've lost my voice. Phoenix, I can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know, but but Matt Nagard is a killer, a murderer. I can't, I can't let him get away with this. I I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, he won't let me lose. <laughs> I mean, he won't let me win. Shucks. Then I'm no better than a guard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I had to face the fact that it is because of Edward that I now know the real truth. He could have gone on guard convicted so many times over, that he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him? Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. The Killer. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through the witness's lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well. The trial will continue. I feel like the judge's like, oh man, I, I had a nice reservation to a restaurant and they just want to continue this court, <laughs> this case. Sir Edwards, please reestablish connection with Mr. Killer. Right away, your honor. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more about... All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about? Are usually done? But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. The Killer, if you don't mind, please testify about your clients in more detail. You legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? About my client. As I have already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime. 
while pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Corita was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. This is a most unexpected turn of events. For the uh, fifth time now? However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Objection! Just a second, your honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony. You don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness, as I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What what this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then then I'll expose the lies in that oh so beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us. <laughs> Judge is like, you guys are winning. Why do you want to lose so bad? What's going on? What What is your, your motive here? So funny. He's so confused. What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, I might raise suspicions on his wrong end, but I have to do something to waste more time. Uh, a witness, about requesting a hit. Yes. How much is your fee? I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you would like to talk business, you can do so after the trial. Uh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not thinking of hiring Mr. Wright! Yes? You, you... You... You want to kill me? You want me dead, don't you? What? What, what would I... What would you think something like... Guilty! Mr. Phoenix Wright, you are hereby declared guilty! Witness. Let's continue. <laughs> I like how the judge is like, I knew it. I knew this guy had something against me. I knew he was trying to kill me. <laughs> Why did you disclose the name of your client? They are your clients, are they not? Tampering of the crime scene. I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very effective at my job. Uh, yeah. Well, a change of occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. That goes without saying, Mr. De Killer. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought they could run away from their guilt. We're talking about the button knife. Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one has to waste their time, including the police. I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. I'm trying to make things as easy. My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything and stab the deceased with a knife, and even hide my card from sight. That is something I cannot overlook. Hmm, it's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him being here. So, you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi to- No! I already told you, I have no intention of using your services, ever! He doesn't trust me! Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one who's on trial here? He 
Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning. That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. That's odd. But even more appalling is a great shape of knife and button. So why did you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around at the scene of the crime is pretty risky. But why was someone who had re who has requested a murder to go to the crime scene anyway? Hmm, that is true. I see what you Uh-huh. Yep, that's exactly what you said. If that's the case, then why did the person just request that you do it? Sadly, that is not possible. Huh? My job is to kill, that is all, and to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is so my clients may escape blame. To protect them is my duty, hmm. even if they say it's for revenge. Setting someone else up to take your fall. And that's all you have to testify. Yes, and I pray that I will never be called to the stand again. Again? As in you plan to continue? I must, as I have yet to find a person to take my place and become the fourth successor. Actually, how would you like a new life? <laughs> I like how the killer is just constantly trying to recruit Phoenix. Excuse me? No, no, no. I'm fine, really. Are you really now? I wonder what kind of man the judge thinks I am now. What are you going to do now, Phoenix? All you can do is expose the lies. It's true, however, you realize this will be very bad for a client, right? Ugh, I'm so confused. The one thing I know for sure is that I can't let this trial end yet. As I have already stated, yada yada. I did it to frame another. Very beginning. And precisely what the situation is at all times. Already knew from the beginning that one creator was dead. Did she? No? Did she? opposite now. <laughs> We're trying to figure out how to make him guilty. Okay, so those two lines of thinking didn't work. Um, I 
I've already done. Let me see. Um, maybe it's not this one. I know my line of thinking is a little too far ahead, but I'm just like, trying to figure out what they want here. This one's a very clear, that's not true. Objection! Oh, okay, well. Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. The Killer. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, I had no idea Juan Corita had been murdered. But how? How do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass. Mr. Killer's supposed client thought Mr. Corita had only fainted. Which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured out for the victim. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the footprint fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would have never have left behind their fingerprints. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? I... Is it is a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? That's not very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client as you claim, then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Karina's death. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How strange. Yes. Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix. If the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised! You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, sorry. Well, that was an awfully weak objection for the two of you. Anyway, I'm positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here, 
Just know that the very outcome of this trial lies within those items. This request came to me, oh, about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the awards ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mis- I don't even know how we can disprove this! <laughs> how do you disprove that? Hmm, so you, could f you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. One week ago, are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. When he requests my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please, stop. At any case, oh, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. Specific date and time. His request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. Did you ask why on the specific night? No. I tried to fulfill all my conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Impressive. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. Bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in Juan Corita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item from me. He must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He's planning to publicly disclose his contents at the press conference after all. That is correct, and if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where that bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just not... It's important? That is. The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Oh, really? Witness, please continue with the testimony! <laughs> you went to the certain bar to discuss. So, you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was a pause? Press it. Witness, give me more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. Why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, was his testimony just... It's very important. First, it was important. Mr. The Killer had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. You're saying that the client really was Adrian Andrews. Uh, I guess so. You see, it's just as I said. Ugh, I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Be carefully and relax. Now then, would the witness please could take you? Do I trust you in your memory? The client was Adrian Andrews. That is correct. Well, he says that you met... He says the two of the men. But if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with this to kill his testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw his suspicion. If he can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about delicate balance. Oh, 
Oh man. I press everything. Maybe. was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. Eyeballs? That's when I thought I could trust this person as a client. Oh, you messed up, the killer. Why'd you say him? Hmm. It's true what they say about talking face to face. It was very important. If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Hmm, really? If that's the case, witness, please include your state include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. From the moment I saw him, I thought I can trust this person as a client. But as we know now, that was not how it turned out, correct? What do you mean? Adrian Andrews turned out to be a client who couldn't stick to the rules, right? Well, yes. I suppose you are correct. Hmm. So, I would like to check one last time. Are you sure your testimony is accurate? Okay. Who's him? Who, who, who's he? Who that? Who's a him? What are you- what are you talking about? Adrian Andrews? I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry. But that is an impossible tale. What? Shelly the Killer. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Well, why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up. About her. So, what is the issue? Oh. What did you just say just now? About her? If you had ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh ho ho! <laughs> how do you sound? How do you make a robot sound like oh ho ho and then breaks? Order, order in the court. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following. That he always meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor. That is exactly the point. That means Mr. the Killer's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. Mm -hmm. 
Oh god. <laughs> why why did they make his sweat mark so big? Ew. He's actually just protruding oil. That's that's gross. <laughs> I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very androgynous, androgynous name. Mm, yes, I see. Unluckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one has stated Adrian Andrews' gender. So he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. What? What? What is going on? Shelly to kill her. This court demands an explanation. Um. I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Oh, I know, he's just gonna spit out more lies. Very well. But this time, please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. You know they lie in all the time, Judge. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. The request was for the murder of one Corita and two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Hmm, so you took this job through a letter. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his early t earlier testimony, which means he is definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know, I can't make him suspicious, but I think we're okay. Like, we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me. No matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Oh, they trust each other. Even across the court. <laughs> oh, my mail. Isn't this against everything you say? Did you just say you must meet your, with your clients? Yes, I suppose I did say that. However, there are some clients for whom a meeting is not possible. But did you meet your client this time? No, I did not. Oh, come now. Let's stop with this game of cat and mouse. Using your silkiest voice is not going to work on me. Alright then, just cough it up and confess. This is right, you can't badger a witness with such a harsh word. Um, you're a lawyer. So behave like one and present evidence instead of mindlessly yelling. Now then, do you have any proof that Mr. McKellar met with his client? I... Don't? Yet. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I don't have any proof. I see. In your line of questioning, which isn't a waste of time. Sadly for us, Your Honor, this is the nature of right and wrong. <laughs> wow. There have been times when I took a job without having to met my client. Why could you not meet certain clients? Recently, I have been receiving more requests. If I met each and every client, I would lose some nice business opportunities. Nice business opportunities. On top of which, the times have changed. It is now the age of information and computers, correct? Well, I have joined the times and now take requests via e electronic email. I keep saying email! Electronic mail. Electronic mail. Do you have to mail them in a special insulated envelope? Uh, I'm very sorry. I despise the shortening of words. What I meant by electronic mail is what is commonly referred to as an email. Email. In the contest of mimicry, the judge would would be a parrot, hands down. Anyway, so you took this job without having met your client, and The request was for the murder. What are the two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. 
should I do? Should I let him slide? I'm really bad if I push his button. Nah, take it, man. Whether or not they're related to this court, in this case, is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney? Y yes? Everything I have said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one... Boy! Uh-oh. This is really- this is looking really bad. I should not press my luck. Alright, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? I kinda want you to keep pressing, brother. I, I do. I, I want you to keep pressing. I genuinely want you to. Do it. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. Bear figurine. After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Kurita's suitcase. And then what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please conclude what you have stated in your testimony. As you wish. One of these was to find the bear bigger green and to give it to the green and bruise. I found this figurine at Mr. Ongard's mansion. When he gave it to Miss Andrews, so what was it doing there? I was waiting for her there. That was also part of the plan to frame Mr. Ongard, but George. Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any problems? Not yet. Use. As long as I can't put my finger on the central problem here, pressing this witness anymore would be extremely dangerous. Turns out Mr. Wright has no problems. Well then, with witness, please continue. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. So you're saying that you never saw your client's face? Not even once? I did. Once. It was when I went to give my client the figurine. Mm, yes, I see. But Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at the time. Mask. The Nickel Samurai mask, I'm guessing. Oh, Mr. Ryan, what do you have to say about this? Do you have any problems? Oh, shoot, I was about to. No objections for now? Not if I did something to made a bad over it. There are no problems with this testimony, Your Honor. Pretty much reached the end of a rope here. Huh? Seems like we're still okay to me. But that's exactly what is so bad. At any rate, we're going. We will end up completely destroying the killer's life. If we do that, you already know how serious of a situation I'll put us in. Ooh, yeah. All I can do now is pray that those items reach us in time. He's taking it so long. I know he got into a car accident, but come on. I heard time in my mail. There have been times when I took a job without having that client. Two or three. I was to give it to Adrian Andrews. So the killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. And in somewhere in that statement, there is a contradiction. And yet, I know that if I present something trivial here, he will cut the connection on his end. If you want to make a strong point, Phoenix, you have to present strong evidence. Oh, man, they're just making me doubt myself. But let's, let's go over this one more time. He gave them Miss Andrews a bear figurine. I told you to take the bear and wait for her at Ongar Mansion, is that correct? Yes, where are you going with this? 
Well, I think maybe you might have remembered a few things incorrectly. What? This battle wits, I can't let up on him. I don't think it is possible for Miss Andrews to have been the recipient of this bear. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Either because Sorry, I went to visit the water closet for a second. Huh? Mr. Attorney, I think it's time I stated this in terms even you can comprehend. If you ask me any more of these pointless questions, there will be no mercy. Oh shoot, it's not even the judge that takes it out on me. Okay, so let's try the other one. Let's not do that one for now. How about the other one? Once I did once. Can you describe her for me? That Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at this time. definitely saw your client's face. Let's recall Mr. Power's testimony. After the words after the word ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of the room, still in his nickel samurai costume. Matt gave the bellboy a tip. He received quite a large roll of cash. Oh, okay, so this is where he brings this up. And at the time, he was not wearing his nickel samurai mask. Order, order. Yes, now that you mention it, I do remember that. Witness. Yes, that night I did wander the floor as a bellboy. I received plenty of tips that, my, uh, that night for carrying juice to the various rooms. Of all things, tomato juice, though. <laughs> Is that so wrong? Huh? The man who gave me that tip was not my client. probably just a very generous person. I'm sorry, but sadly, we are not nearly so generous here. If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on a trays, then why on earth would I stand here around prosecuting? <laughs> stand around here prosecuting? That's right, Edgeworth. Oh, the deja vu. And isn't his salary more than enough for one man? Hmm. And where's your evidence that the large roll of cash was not, in fact, a tip. Come, Mr. Edgeworth, show me the money. Show me the goods. What? Mr. Attorney. Yes? You know, I think your line of questioning has been a little strange. In fact, I would say you don't seem to believe Miss Andrews is my client. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not like that at all. I, I just think lies aren't a good thing, you know? Oh, I know, and I agree. Lies are not a good thing at all. Uh, I think we are on the same page now, aren't we, Mr. Attorney? Remember, if I feel threatened in any way, I am free to cut contact at any time. I'm sorry. Please forgive my foolishness. Hmm, if only you were this apologetic all the time. Anyway, I do not see a huge contradiction here. Therefore, you may continue. Oh my god, so that was nothing? So it is the other one. Wow. Do you see anything here aside from the... Okay, 
so it is. It is this one. But now I just need to figure out what to present there. <laughs> an issue. I just don't know how to prove it. So the killer says he gave the figurine to Miss Andrews. But I know somewhere in the statement there is a contradiction. And yet, I know if I present something trivial here. Okay. So, I was like, does that, does that give me anything else? But no, it doesn't. Excited when the music cuts out because I think I was smart, but it's not me being smart, it's just. Ugh! Please! What is it? And it takes forever to get back there. How do I prove that it wasn't her? again? No way. I don't think it could. I did this one earlier though, right? Where it was girly walking outside with Samurai outfit. Right? I like how my hand is like nowhere near where my face is at. I'm like leaning against my hand. So. Hmm. Like. I, I, pr I want to present th that one. I want to present this one. Because that's her. We've established that she put the second outfit on. It 
in Juan Carita's room. Right? That makes sense, right? But I feel I I I'm pretty sure I presented this and it was wrong. Yeah, they hate me. They hate me. So if that's not the case, oh shoot. Okay, that isn't it either. Could it possibly be a person that they want me to, to do instead? Even though I don't even know how I would link that. stumped though I again I'm stumped but uh, <laughs> I'm like trying to think what could prove that because her being a way to start the event doesn't count and then her also walking and getting like the second outfit also doesn't count so It's like this is where you have to break the case without exactly like 
blowing it off, right? I'm trying to like figure out what I could pick here. Man, this is a real three hour case. Ha! <laughs> huh. Pain. What do I think, Phoenix? I think we don't know what we're trying to do anymore, Phoenix. What do I think? I don't know what I think anymore. <laughs> I, I don't. Ow. But this is like the one that I want to press. Let me go back to this one real quick. Like this doesn't have a evidence thing, right? Miss Andrews was wearing a mask at that time. a contradiction. And that's not what I want to put. Maybe I just have to present like... down the same route as earlier. <laughs> uh. Please forgive my foolishness. Okay. Maybe I know how to go down the contradiction route? I don't know. I guess? Okay. This is actually one thing that I haven't tried yet, and I'm like... I don't know how this, this works, but... Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, why? 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 Uh, what, uh, what, what does a bear... I'll, I'll just let them answer it. Okay, fine. <sighs> Shelly the killer, you're making me do a whole entire running around. Why are you making me do all this? Why does a bear count? If you had really given the bear to Miss Andrews, then this item should not have been inside. Oh. You're right. You're right! She would have been able to just pop it open and just tear it up right at the spot, I guess. Like, with the second outfit. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. <laughs> this item. I see where you're going. 
up. That's where I'm going. Where's everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Your Honor, please think about- Please think back to Miss Andrew's testimony. I was going to burn it for her sake. If even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrew's hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Order, order, order. So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that the suicide note was still inside the bear. It tells us that your client didn't even know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means... Means, your honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to beat the client. Ugh. Ugh. Mr. Phoenix Wright. I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You... You must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's not... That's enough. If that is your only... Or if that is your intention, then there is only one thing for me to do. Wait, please! Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. No! Please! Not that, please wait. Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end, and I may stay my hand otherwise. Lost second savior? <laughs> Oh, same Phoenix. Same. What in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there is a need to hear more testimony, or is, or is this enough? The rabble, rabble, rabbles. Well, we should... Edgeworth, we can't do this! If we keep this up, Miles, she'll- uh, uh, The prosecution- I- What has come over, everyone? Even you are. The prosecution. Russ. What is going on around here? And John just like, y'all are so weird. The prosecution has no further questions, your honor. Wh what? What? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. The prosecution rests with no further questions. And then, the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even I am reluctant. Even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shirley DeKiller's client is... Adrian Andrews. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. If I end the trial here, right now, then your client, Matt on guard, would be declared innocent. And in this place, Adrian Andrews would be charged of murder. Alright, there's a reason why I'm saving here, guys. Real. There is a reason. I'm waiting for it. Miss Andrews would be charged of murder. The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's Final remarks. Hopefully the last. Bailiff, please bring the please bring the defendant mountain guard to the stand. The items with the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Huh. 
yourself. I guess even the old funny dunny figured me out. Mr. On Guard? What an atrocious lawyer I have, giving his own client up like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? You better get a guard a guilty sentence, okay? But but if I did that, Maya will die. I need to see the ending, though. Then Miss Andrews will be charged as a murderer. Do I say he's guilty or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. It all hinges on what I choose. Now that Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. The person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews. And your client, Mr. Matt on guard, is in innocent. There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer is going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't... I can't do this, but I had to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. Listen to your heart. Cause you know it is true. Listen to your heart. But no one else can do. <laughs> You don't know where you're going, and I don't know why, but listen to your heart before she tells you goodbye. And then we're going to say not guilty because I want the bad ending. <laughs> what a good song. I know. That is a solid song. Everybody hates me now. We're waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Matt on guard, your client deserves an answer. Let me lose. Maya, I'm sorry. Matt on guard is. <gasps> they're not. They're not. They're not letting me lose? <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying so hard to get this bad ending. Oh, okay, well... <laughs> Francisca von Karma! What, what are you doing here? Ah, oh, you see me now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off of that scruffy fool. To bring them. The final pieces, do you have them? You should know better than to ask Mr. Miles Edgeworth. A Von Karma is perfect in every way. The evidence is here in perfect condition. Don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine and his injuries are minor. All of the items are inside of this. What a filthy old coat this is. That's dumb shoes. I, uh, that's gumshoes. I can spot his tattered rags anywhere. I apologize for his ugliness, but there was nothing else to wrap the items in. I felt long and hard this whole trial. All for this what's inside this raggedy coat? I'm sure that inside this coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. Your Honor, inside that filthy coat are the defense's final pieces of evidence. Your final evidence? This trial is already over. All that remains is for me to hand down my verdict. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. But what? Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Ms. Von Karma be allowed to present these as pieces of evidence. Hmm. I suppose you are right, Mr. Edward. I grant permission to do so. However, this one obvious r rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will not be accepted by this court. Now, Miss Von Karma, if you please. These pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm, he must have been in quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor. The killer left three pieces of evidence. So 
somewhere among the evidence we're about to see. There'll be something that will turn this whole situation around like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That's all we can hope for. What are they? The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this case? Uh, yes. Does that pistol have any relation to this case? We have yet to perform a ballistic test, so I can't say anything for certain. However, I believe it has something to do with this case, at least with me. That's the pistol that he used to shoot you, isn't it? That's what I believe, yes. Oh. I kept the bullet they removed from my shoulder as a sort of memento. I'm sure it will be an excellent sample for the test. So, that's the pistol that was used to shoot Francisca. It's probably not going to help us very much. The second piece of evidence is this videotape. I bet the killer took that from Longard Mansion. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh, yes. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. What would you say to that? Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. D the killer went back for it? That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Hmm. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shelly the killer is no ordinary man. The last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. It's at the uniforms of the Gatewater Hotel. Might as well just question all of it. Was that used during the crime? I am almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it, the killer was wearing this the night of the murder. There is one thing I found interesting about this uniform. What is that? There is a button missing on this uniform. A button. It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. That is all I have to present, Your Honor. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure, were we under normal circumstances, that these items for Shelly to kill his hideout would be very important clues. However, our question is not who did the killing, it is who is the client. Oh boy, we're getting there. I know it, I smell it. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Thank you for your hard work, Von Karma. Miss Von Karma, you may step down now. Wait, Your Honor! Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. This court has already has all the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix? I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make that miracle happen. You have, you've come this far, you can't give up now. But, but, no no matter how you think about it, it's, it's... Try for my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of the situation for us. T two? The first. Make on guard wish from the bottom of his soul for a verdict, guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. If Vanguard himself wishes to be convicted, then he won't let his hostage go. And that may be true, but that's asking me to do the impossible. Second way. Force the killer to end his contract with Vanguard. If the killer were to no longer think of Vanguard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He's a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first, but if you can make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. If 
think her problem was. The judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. The, sh the pieces he was shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix, think these things through from the other side. Isn't that what always worked for us? The other side? What does she mean? You mean to turn things around? Phoenix, the judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? The person who needs the evidence. The defense, the prosecution, the judge? We've seen all the the pieces of evidence. And that is how we come to know the truth. But there's one person who has yet to see them all. And that person does not know the truth. The truth, and maybe what will bring about the miracle in the end. Who? <laughs> God. <laughs> there are no objections this time, correct? Now then, I will not pronounce my verdict. Why do we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? Objection! I already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I'm not saying it is the need. It is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then, you want to show the evidence to that person? Who, who, who is that? Yes, Your Honor. You mean the killer? Please, Your Honor. This right for you to ask with, with such passion. I will grant you one chance. One chance. Ooh, ooh, we're, we're in it now. Ooh, we're in the hot seat, folks. Let's go. Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. That's impossible. To turn this situation around in one try? One try. That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything that has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking on guard down at the same time. Now that it's right, let's not waste any more time. Who would you like to show evidence to? I see. And now tell this court what one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. Uh, it, it has to be one of these three, right? Come on! Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, um, I don't have anything to say to this. Hmm, how about you, Ms. Von Karma? Well, I was just shot, so... <laughs> Poor Von Karma. I'm afraid I can't allow the defense to continue. <laughs> What? I was right. No one understands what you were talking about anymore. Listen to me, judge. Listen to me. <laughs> That's enough, Mr. Wright. I will now state my verdict. This court finds defendant mount on guard. Confetti. Yay. That is all. This court is adjourned. Oh man, I actually got the ending when I was trying. <laughs> when I'm legitimately trying to actually answer the question. I ran away from the courtroom and wandered the streets alone. I never saw Maya again. The killer is a man of his word, so I'm sure he released her as promised. I heard the verdict of Miss Andrews' trial a few days later. She was found guilty, of course. The miracle never happened. No! They fixed it! Maybe it was never meant to! Because a miracle is something that doesn't exist. They, they fixed it. I can't believe this. No, they should have kept the OG. Why did they fix it? The miracle never happened. Aw, y'all. Nah, we, we were robbed. Listen. <laughs> so. During the Summer Game Fest, people were hoping that Capcom would talk about Ace Attorney, right? And. Um, what it is, is that. It was never mentioned, of course, up until uh, the Nintendo Direct. But the OG 
What did it used to be? I'm trying to find like... Oh man, hold up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> they actually fix it, which makes me sad. I need one with the text on it, guys. Why did y'all just post the picture? <laughs> you know what? It's great. Alright, so this is actually really funny. Um, so the the joke is is that in the original, you know, the miracle never happened with the ED, right? In the original DS version, they never fixed it. They, they, they had it wrong. So it's actually the miracle never happened. <laughs> and then, and then when, when, it was, when it was happening, like uh, the Summer Game Fest people were hoping that there would be Ace Attorney announcements because of how active the Ace Attorney like Twitter was. And so, like, non-stop, my entire feed was just people just posting this. <laughs> so, it's so good. The miracle never happened. I, I was- I was waiting. I- I needed- I needed to see this ending. Because I don't think I ever got this ending when I was pl playing the game by myself the first time around. But... That's the joke. So that way you guys know. This is how you guys get cultured with the Ace Attorney fandom. You need to know the miracle never happened. <laughs> oh man. That's good. I can't believe how many people posted this. Even I posted it too at some point. The miracle never happened. Uh. There you go. Now, now you guys know. Alright, let's... Let's actually get the good ending now. Let's try. Try to get the good ending. So that way the miracle will happen. I don't know what to present here, actually. <laughs> I think I was right though. It has to be Shelly the Killer. Alright. I think it's Shelly the Killer. And then maybe the bear? Well, the miracle never happened. <laughs> oh no, I'm locked in! We have to, like, sit through this until I get it. <laughs> oh, man. What? Now I just got to see poor, poor Phoenix being all sad. show he didn't trust him with the job. Yeah. The miracle never happened. This is like a legit ending. <laughs> oh. Okay. Try this again. Shelly the Killer. Oh. Duh. Okay. Maybe we should have just used the new stuff. I thought we were trying not to present any new evidence, but whatever. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. 
Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. All right, it looks like I managed to convince him. Yeah. Maya, she's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. Also, I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. You know the contents of this tape. I was sternly told by my client to not watch it. So I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you are on this tape. Me. There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. See, I was right. I just had to show the right thing. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true? That's right. Who? Who was it that planted a camera? Well, the only person who could have placed a camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. That, that was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Yes, sir. <laughs> your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright, why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did Matt on guard film the crime scene? The reason why he did this is my ticket out of this whole mess. There's like one reason why your client would secretly film the crime scene. Wanted to see Juan get his? Wanted blackmail on you? Didn't trust your skills. You wanted blackmail. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you, and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. Now oh, come on now, Miss Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. You were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shelly the Killer? <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's huffing and puffing now. It looks like... It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. That is the kind of person they are. Their clients is a person who only thinks of plots of how to use people around them. To protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yes. You told us one thing numerous times during your during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors the most of all. Yes, that's right. But what if that traitor was your client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then, that client would become my next target. For the honor of the killer name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. I see. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target? Ah. Oh. I get it. 
This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright. Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. What the? I'm not an item! Maya? I, I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I... Actually, I am sort of... I don't quite know- Oh! Miss Juan Karma, where did that- She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Mr. On Guard. It looks like somehow you got what you wanted. You'll finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly. You should be happy. But before that, I would like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watch this video. <laughs> Help me! Now then, your honor, the verdict if you please. Is this alright with you, Mr. Wright? We have finally reached the end of a long battle. A very long battle. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there's no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Plead whichever way your heart tells you. Listen to your heart! Cause you know it is true. Can you imagine? I saw it plead not guilty. Oh no! And then I was just like, yeah, I want you to die. I want you to die, brother. <laughs> not kidding, this boss I had so many phases. Real! Get it. Mad on guard. Even though I am a lawyer, I cannot make your crime disappear. I think a guilty verdict is appropriate here. Group sing along, go, okay, I got two. Me, me, my wonderful self? G guilty? Even if we got an acquittal, the instant you set foot outside the detention center, your life would be in danger. No matter which way you look at it, you can't run away from your crime anymore. That's scary, but okay. As always, it looks like we haven't covered the real truth. We? I don't remember you helping out this much. He helped you once, even if it was a, a penalty. Mr. Edgeworth, how is my own guard? I have left Miss Von Karma in charge of his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, to witness? Yes. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. The first time I was called to the witness stand during this trial, all I felt was despair. She must be talking about the time Edward really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. He was kind of. This witness, how should I put it? She has an illness. If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. He actually has a line in Investigations that also goes as cold. It's pretty good. And after that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. And today, when the two of you use your combined strength to convict Matt, I... I felt like I had finally been saved. Wow, this is the first time I've ever seen her smile. I'm really happy that you two were in charge of this case. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is... This is the first time I felt comfortable with myself, with who I am. Thank you so much, everyone.
looks like we have resolved everything at last. As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits. And that is good enough for me. That is all. And this quartz is adored. And he's probably like, finally! <laughs> Oh my god, that is like a whole freaking day. That is actually a 9 to 5 right there. You were great out there, Phoenix. What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You got them a guilty verdict this time. But you have to look past all that to what's really important. You know, you, you now realize that there is something more than two than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Ms. Von Karma arrived with final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. You can't make me do this three times. <laughs> should I side with justice or should I save Maya's life? My client, Matt on guard, is. Is he guilty or is he not guilty? Those are your choices then, and your answer? Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. I'm trying to get the bad ending. <laughs> right? Edgeworth, I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. Really? Pearls, you're telling the truth, right, Miss Edgeworth? Yes, she's quite safe. She's on her way here as we speak in a patrol car. Ah, Miss Sigmaya. Miss Sigmaya is safe. You did it. You really did it, Mr. Nick. Oh, she punches the separately hard for a kid. saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her. Mr. Nick will save her. <laughs> oh no. Uh, thanks. Oh. What's wrong? Miss Von Karma. Um. About earlier. Uh. uh thanks. Oh. Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix, right? You... You lost! Your perfect win record has now been crushed. And yet, you are still happy. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever understand, Miss Von Karma. How dare you! Don't worry. She may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. Edgeworth? For my own personal victories, and for guilty verdicts. I used every dirty trick in the book, and so my win record remained spotless. But... A man appeared, and stood fast against that selfish me. I fought him in my usual manner and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened, so I had left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Edwards chooses death because you're so dramatic. <laughs> as well as you should have. As well you should have. A prosecutor who has shamed himself with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. But that was not what had happened. After I left the prosecutor's, prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something. And it was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. What foolish nonsense! We prosecutors use anything we can, we can to attack the defendant. But every time we did so... No matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his undying faith, even if he is sweating his way all the way through it. And then, before I knew it, 
I began to trust in that man as well. What? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses. The truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is to fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This, I promise you. The truth? Yes. That's the reason why prosecutors and defense attorneys exist. But I'm sure you already knew- You knew that already, didn't you, right? That's why you couldn't forgive me. This man who went into hiding, isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory, who ran away into the night. Uh, is... is Mr. Edgeworth right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt... betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with was because I believed in the things you said to me all those years ago. And you... you betrayed your own words. That's why one year ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Miles Edward I knew had died. At least, that's what I told myself. You're, so, you're both dramatic. You pathetic fool! M Miss Von Karma. I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. A Von Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a Von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. Well, you got shot. <laughs> Francisca threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track Gumshoe? I'll return this to this precinct later. There's something else. Ah, isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. We should keep this right. Oh, uh, okay. Nick! M M M Maya! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! I knew you would come through. You got on guard, convicted, like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. Well, of course I did. You know I would never desert you. But we sure pressed our luck this trial. You're really lucky to be standing here. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I would just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost or pearly. Is it really that easy to do something like that? I like how she's like, yeah, I might be dead, but I'll still hang out. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nick. Uh, don't mention it. Really don't, Maya. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, I'm relieved you're all right. Hey, it looks like you made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, well... I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a, a year ago. <laughs> Alright! I think it's time we got out of this depressing place. Aw, huh? where are we going? Food, Nick, food! Grub, chow, I'm starved! I'm so hungry, even you look like a nice juicy burger on a bun to me, Nick. You think I look like a burger? I'm a prime rib, at least. Help me this, Mr. Hedgeway, please. Uh, if you insist. All oh, right. So, how about we hit up our usual, our usual burger joint? Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of my gourmet food. So I've decided that we have to make it up by having another feast. Uh, another feast? Come on, Nick. Food. Hey, 
Val. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Oh god, are you okay? <laughs> Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole of all things. A telephone pole? Then it wasn't a red light that caught him? You did it again, city boy! Oh god, I didn't read what you said! Yeah, it was more exciting than the very last episode of the Steel Samurai. Thanks. Now looky here, Mr. Sui Prosecutor. Don't you reckon you bully Mr. Bright too hard? If you don't start being a lot nicer to him, you might just kick it tonight, even. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now. Everyone gather around. Y'all are gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lada bought herself a new camera. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on, tonight's all about eating, so let's get our chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Amen. You know, when you think about it, you were the one who saved the day, detective. Huh? Oh, me? Really? You think so? Why is somebody still out there in the middle of the night prowling around with their super loud car? Bro, it is almost midnight. Go to bed. <laughs> He's right. Oh god, I- I- uh, shucks. I think this trial would have ended very different. I would have had- sorry, I can't read. I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Yeah, well, you know, it's- <laughs> Huh? Wait. That's odd. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Boy! Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. There was a fourth item? Now oh, come on, y'all, it's over! <laughs> oh boy, I tell ya, you are really something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped, never a dull moment with you, huh? <laughs> you think? Why does she look so happy about that? But being shut away for two whole days? Aren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. I felt so hopeless. So to keep my mind off of things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had it rough, gal. So where's this picture of yours? Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see Mystic Maya's picture. Mm, you know, I don't know where it went. Aw, that's too bad. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Ah. Sure is nice to finally see them both smiling again. Hmm? What is that, Edgeworth? This thing is picking something up. Ah! That's... That's Miss Von Karma's receiver! Uh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. I can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. That's odd. Even though you're standing right here... The tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, it's probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Edgeworth! Oh shoot, Maya! You haven't eaten anything yet! And you've gotten- And you've eaten way too much, you glutton! I had fun tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me. He flutters away. Wait, what? I just want to say thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved me out there. Hm. If anything, sh if anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I skipped all that. I wonder if there's anything I can give him to express how I feel. Take this back. What's this? Thank you. That's all thanks to you too. You... and her. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. It looks like Mr. Edgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, hey Mystic Maya? Hmm? Yes, Pearly? I guess you two can go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. Pearly! You cut it out already? You're embarrassing me! Anyway, so, 
Who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask! Everyone say thank you to Nick! Huh? Oh yeah, I'm kinda at the point where I can't even buy instant noodles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gumshoe! So I kinda already put your name on the bill. Oh, huh? Yeah, I got me a situation just like that myself. We're all poor. There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself this good old beauty here. It'd be, it better be anyhow for like 3,000. Huh? 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 Actually, I reckon you bought it for me since it's on your tab and all. <gasps> Lada! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick. Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Ah, oh, you don't need a whole bag now, you hear? It's alright, pal, thanks! This is gonna be the first time I hear the real you. Go on. It's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage and all. Alright then. If you say so. Objection! You really came through, Nick. I had to hide that- I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro! You should be proud of that, Maya. <laughs> like, we are concerned about you. I'm so happy that you could save Mystic Maya and Mr. Nick. And I'm so happy for you, too. Speaking of which, I think this hotel is a popular place for honeymooners, so I sort of made reservations for the two of you just in case. She is such a shipper. She's like one of those that like ship real life people. Well, pal, it looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Edgeworth had a long talk with the chief, and he got me reinstated for my sake. I heard he said things like, Letting that one go is bad for all of society. I knew it. Crashing headlong into everything is the only way to live, pal. I'm Maggie Bird, and retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be a waitress from now on and bring smiles and joy to the people who come by the restaurant, sir. I hope you'll stop by, stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. Oh yeah, we're gonna see her again. I just don't remember which game. <laughs> I think it's actually the third game that we see her again. Mm, yes, are you here to visit a patient? Mm, I'm Director Hoti, ho ho ho. Recently, mm -hmm. So that girl, you know, I haven't seen her around. <laughs> yes, but I remember if I even laid so much an eye on her, it would go. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I got whipped though. <laughs> yes, yeah, oh, oh, oh. Ow. I hate that he gets a credit scene. What is this? I would take a lot over him. It's time to begin our quest of world circus domination, sweetie. And to let the world know we are serious, I plan to make a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe. Hey, Max, what do you think Zimbabwe is like? Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at Mo's jokes. Oh god. Please don't tell me Mo makes an appearance. Ugh. I don't even remember his voice. <laughs> I'm ready! I'm ready! There's no way these jokes are gonna fall on deaf ears! I'm gonna be more contemporary with my humor! Mo curls represent! We got our new act all worked out. Prepare for the Hallelujah Chorus! Say something, will ya? You're supposed to start this off! Get on with it! There has to be one more trial. No, there's only four trials in this game. There, there was only four cases. What's this? 
It's, it's, it's an orderly electric razor recharging. I can't believe this. Really, how long do they plan on making me do this? Uh, but if it's Edgy Pooh's idea, so that means I must have a deep me hidden meeting. But why do I get the feeling? They wouldn't forget about me, would they? Uh, I was never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world of me. They used to call me Queen Wendy and treat me like Rosie and about anything. And this is going to feel pain and they're going to feel the burn. And I'm putting fire. It's very dangerous in the warehouses where they use the scenery and the right to the sink. And she speaks way too fast. Four. I've been gypped? Yeah, there's only four. But this is a long case. I mean, that, 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 that trial? That's a long trial. I appreciate everything you and Mr. Edward did for me from the bottom of my heart. Well, that's right. I received a letter from Miss Von Karma. She said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful to have met everyone. I think it's cute, though, that every character has a little... Even you? It has become difficult for me and this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you would like to request my services, please be sure to visit my home page. May we both be blessed with longevity. He has a home page. <laughs> oh man, he is the future. He is... He is already with the times. Where are you going, Francisca? How did you know I was here? With this. That's... I heard you were planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Hmm. That's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This filthy, drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going in the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things? It seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it in here? It doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. Hurry, what are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing! You can't possibly understand what it means to be a Manfred von Karma's daughter. To be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Francisca. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what. Athelia? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius. There's no doubt about that. But... But me... I'm no genius. I've always known that. That I... I had to be one. I had to. You may not be a genius like your father, but you are a prosecutor. You have been and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. Speaking of that... Right gave me this to hold on to. Right. You knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. Prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. I hope you will think deeply about what you should be striking down with that whip. You haven't changed a bit. You've always... You've always left me alone or walked on ahead without me. Miles Edgeworth, I've always hated you. And then, finally, my chance to take revenge on you arrived. If I could 
to win against that man. If I can make Phoenix Wright bow down in defeat, then this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until today. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews. You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics, isn't that right? Huh. Today, you chased after me after I had left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But I have no intention of stopping. If you say you are going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francis Bon Karma. Oh, Franny. I... I am Francisca von Karma. I don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now, so you'd better prepare yourself, Miles Edgeworth. Phoenix Wright, one day, someday, I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then, this last piece of evidence that never made it to you, I'll take good care of this fourth piece, so I can give it to you when at last we meet again. my back just like popped in like three different places <laughs> yes we finished Woohoo! nice oh that was that was good yay Woohoo! now you know what it feels like to be a lawyer back pain and all I know literally carrying this whole this whole case on my own back <laughs> But I'm excited! Now we actually get to play the game! We get to play the game! Guys, the game that I've been... I've been wanting to play this entire time. <laughs> um... I want to play... The next one. Now that we, we finished Justice for All, right? We're going to Trials and Tribulations! Yeah! Woo! Trials and Tribulations! This is... This is too good. Honestly, Trials of Tribulations is awesome. I, I, I'm so excited to play this game. However, I still have the plan of inviting my friend to play it with me. Because she has not played it before. She's played the other two, but then I, I had to ask her, I'm like, Hey, did you, did you ever play this third one? She's like, I was gonna play it this week, and I'm like, wait, before you do, can you just play it with me? And she goes, uh, I guess. <laughs> so, much suffering for her. Oh, I'm so excited. I need, I need to watch her play this game, though. Your pal's gonna play it on stream? I, I, I'm gonna see if she is willing to do so. I, I would like to invite her to stream it along with me. Um... I also want her to just pretty much control control the the game. So I'm curious if there if there's a way to do it through remote play. So that way she can be the one to click things and I just sit here and look pretty and maybe click every so often. I don't know. <laughs> well, if not, if not, of course I would still control it. 
remote play, yeah. So, I... I will see. I'll talk with her about it and see what she thinks, but I am so, so excited for Trials of Tribulations because this is... This is definitely out of, like, if you, if you enjoyed, alright, if you enjoyed watching, like, the past few cases, you will, you will like Trials of Tribulations. Like, it is so compelling with its characters, and actually concludes the series, like, the trilogy, really well, too. Um, also does a lot of callbacks, from what I remember. I don't remember a lot. But it was good. Me and my sister always talk about Trials and Tribulations because of how much it scarred us. <laughs> it, 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 I wouldn't even say it's like PTSD. It's just you can't not, not talk about the, the original trilogy without mentioning something from Trials and Tribulations. So, uh, yeah, that is, that is that is it, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me and watching me finish Justice For All. Lots of fun. That was a good one. I, I liked how that ended. Very sweet. And Von Karma, she, Von Karma is not really my most favorite character, but she she grows on you. I feel like she grows on, on you as a person, as, the, as a character, as the game goes on. You don't really hate her by the end. You kind of start understanding where she's coming from. And then, ultimately, you realize she's just a kid. She's just a kid, and she doesn't want to really be alone. So, I, I'm really happy. I'm happy that we finished it. Yes! Nice, nice, nice. So, to be honest, I don't know if I'll be starting next week. If my friend is interested in starting by next week, then okay. See me next Friday streaming Trials and Tribulations with hopefully friend. But if not, maybe maybe I'll just stream something else. So okay, I'm done. I'm gonna go. I'm pretty tired. It's it's like been four hours. That's a long that was a long like last chunk for the that part of the trial. But good stream. Thank you guys for hanging. Good night, good night, good night. Goodbye. Good night. See you. Bye-bye.